What's going on, everybody? Corey Smith here, CoreFX. Welcome back to another pre-week market analysis video. As guys have, who have been, uh, as you guys and girls out there who have been following all my videos know, um, this past weekend I did not upload a uh, pre-week analysis video. I mentioned it in the week prior that I was going to be away that weekend, St. Patrick's Day, family visiting, friends visiting. I was away, a um, whole bunch of different stuff going on. So I. Wasn't able to make that video. However, uh, back this week, we're going to go ahead and go over what happened last week, the week of March 8th, as well as what is going to be going on in the Forex markets next week, March 25th week. Um, today's Saturday, the 24th. Let me get this video uploaded today so that you guys have all day Sunday to watch it and prepare yourselves for the week ahead. Um, going to go over the top performing and underperforming pairs, as well as what's going on in the news coming up this week, what happened last week, so you guys can kind of be prepared for what to trade around, what to expect, and uh, what events are going to cause some moves in the markets. And for those of you who don't know, my name is Corey Smith. I run a CoreFX trading education company. I also do educational content for T3 Live. T3 Live is um, one of the bigger names in the U.S. as far as trading goes. They're a division of T3 Trading Group, one of the biggest proprietary trading companies in the U.S., they have some unbelievable content. Make sure you guys subscribe to this page, like their videos, check out their other content, their website, as well as my website, Corey at corefxtrading.com. Sorry, it's corefxtrading.com. My email is Corey at corefxtrading.com if you guys have any questions. Otherwise, I'm going to hop right into this video, go over the analysis, and uh, see what we got going on in the Forex markets. Starting with last week's performance, checking out here, we've got the relative performance tool through Finviz. As you guys see here, this is a weekly analysis of the top performing to the left and underperforming to the right currencies. It is all weighed against the US dollar. That's why the US dollar will never have a percent exchange. Um, as you can see, the CAD, pound, yen were the top performers of the week, pretty standout. Not too crazy of a week, uh, one and a half percentage move being about the biggest. And then Aussie, um, not too much of a downside move. Basically, when you see a week like this with majority of the pairs to the upside, that tells you the US dollar was a weak performer. Uh, New Zealand dollar, Aussie, and US dollar were the top three, with Aussie being the worst, and then US, New Zealand right behind. Swiss franc and euro, um, not really too big of a moving week for them. A little bit of choppiness. So that pretty much covers the performing pairs. The CAD, a lot of the CAD's performance came later on in the week. Um, pound, Thursday into Friday as well. Yen as well. We had a big risk off move in the markets this week as uh, President of the US, Donald Trump, has issued more tariffs on China. And this is sending out some fears that there might be start a trade war with two of the biggest economies in the world. Um, so really the tone in the stock market was a sell-off. We're back down to the lows now from the last big sell-off. And uh, when this happens, as you guys watch my videos, if you guys do watch them, you know the yen is a top performing safe haven currency, which basically means when there's uh, anything going on in the world to spook investors, um, money's going to leave the riskier assets like the stock markets and the lower developed nations. Um, and they're gonna go into safer assets, you know, things like gold, cash, and Japanese yen is one of them. It is a safe haven currency. It's always been looked at as that. And whenever there's a move that is risk off like there was this week, money typically floods to the yen and the same vice versa happens when there is strong growth and a lot of money flooding into stocks and the stock markets are rallying. Typically money leaves the yen, so the value of the yen goes down and that's where the risk on rates off comes in. The Swiss franc and the US dollar have been historically uh, risk off currencies as well, but the yen's really the number one, um, has always been, stand out as the number one, but even so more lately, the yen has been. Um, and the Aussie and New Zealand are growth currencies. They are gonna be on the higher yielding um, uh, carry and interest rate side of the world. So when there's growth and high, a high risk appetite and people are investing money in riskier assets, the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, and the Canadian dollar typically see money go to them as they are gonna be your more aggressive growth strategy style currencies to um, acquire and add to your portfolio. So moving on from here, I'm going to go ahead and take us to the charts. Another thing that I do in this video is I break down the technical analysis of each of the eight major currencies that we follow. 
U.S. dollar, the euro, the yen, the pound, the Swiss franc, the Canadian dollar, the Aussie, and New Zealand. And I'll go ahead and break down the technical charts so you guys get an idea of where these pairs are heading. And then we'll go into the news to see where the fundamentals are going to be helping drive these technical areas. So starting with the U.S. dollar, as you guys know, we've been in this strong downtrend. This red line represents the daily downtrend for me. We came down to this strong support at around 88.50, and we double bottomed a few weeks back. I told you guys this second bottom with a bullish engulfing failing to break this support could lead to a bounce. It's exactly what it did. We've got this strong supply zone up here at around 90.50 from this sell-off. Price has now created a resistance off it and has been struggling to break. The 50 SMA also held on here with this touch. We came back up into the zone again this week on Wednesday, and we had this strong bearish engulfing after the FOMC meeting off of this zone bearish engulfing off of this resistance, touching it again. My predict projection is that the US dollar is gonna come back down to retest this 88.50 support zone here. We're at a very strong level right now, so it could fail to break and come back higher. But we did break this trend line here in gray that you can see. We're on this black support line, and I do think we are going to be making a lower low. The structure broke uh, a couple weeks ago when I showed you guys this higher high was made. We had set a higher high and then a higher low. And we saw this nice engulfing bullish move off this thing. We thought we could have gone up to set a new higher high. However, structure is held. The prior higher high has held. Prices failed to break it, and we got this bearish engulfing. This is why our analysis has to constantly be dynamic and open to change and adaptation. And uh, this U.S. dollar really isn't giving us any great signs. However, um, we do see and want to anticipate different reactions it could do. And right now I'm leaning more towards the bearish side. Obviously this 90.50 resistance and this 88.50 support are gonna be the big movers. Once one of them's broken, that's when I'm really gonna be looking to jump on board the dollar because it's still range bound in this. However, we are in a downtrend. We are showing some bearish signs. So I do think the dollar can move lower this week. Taking us to the Euro. Again, as you guys know, the Euro and the dollar are the make up about 50 60 percent of the forex transactions so it's a huge chunk of the trades so when you look at a dollar chart and you look at a euro chart they're going to look very similar in opposite ends so the euro dollar is the most commonly traded pair that's long euro short dollar so we've been seeing the euro dollar moving higher right so the euro chart is going to be moving higher and that's why we see the dollar chart moving lower so the euro is going to look the same as the dollar just in a reverse trend so we are in this bullish flag pattern now, right? We're bounced off this support again. And as you guys can see, we've had a ton of consolidation right in here. So we haven't had much strong movement. As you can see, if you look at these size candle moves back here in this time, and really most of these times with these gaps and these bigger candles, you can see the past few weeks we've had not many gaps, not many strong moves not much of anything. So we're due for a little bit of a return to the volatility here in the Euro. We can see a break to the upside or a rollover break to the downside. I'm leaning more towards up, but we'll have to wait and see. I do think that a strong move is, is bound to come here with the Euro. I don't think there's much going on as far as news and fundamentals next week to make it happen, but we'll always have to watch the technicals as that is where the real king of price action lies. Now we're looking at the yen, Japanese yen. As I showed you guys a few weeks ago, we finally broke out of this yearly range we were in. And I told all of you guys, when you break out of a long range like this, you can expect a one-to-one -one move of that range, which is where I've marked up here. So as you guys can see, this 94 level here is my uh, medium term target for the yen. I think we could go up to 96, but medium term 94 is the target. And as you can see, we have been making a clear nice trending set of higher highs and higher lows. If you look here, we got a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high was just made. So what I'm predicting to happen this week, as you can see with the black line drawn here, is a higher low, a little bit of a pullback down into maybe this support resistance range at around 90, 50 or so, and then we get a bounce higher. So this week we could see a little bit of the sell off with that yen. A lot of it I think lies in how the US stock markets open how we see the markets trading coming off of this weekend. If we see the markets recovering and bouncing, I think the yen can sell off a little bit. If we see the markets continuing to crash, I don't think the yen's gonna look back. I think it's gonna keep plowing higher. Taking us to the pound, as you guys can see here, we've been in this uptrend, but we were selling off, having a bit of a retracement. 50 SMA held, broke it temporarily, but then it held. 
broke above, and we've got both 50 and the 20 sloping upwards now. The 20 is under the 50, but it's just barely on it. We should get across soon. Um, not too much crazy prediction going on here, but I do think we will see this continue back up to at least retest this high here at around 139. Um, if this 139 level gets broken, that is a very significant zone. We're back to around the pre-Brexit moves. So Brexit sell-off brought us down here, and then we had another sell-off down here, and we have bottomed out with this triple bottom here, and we've been recovering in this uptrend since nicely. So we had this sell-off, and then this tr counter trend line was broken, and we've been trickling higher slowly. I think we'll get up to this 139 resistance base around a little bit, and then we'll either double top off of this and break back down to maybe come down to this daily trend line, or we could bust higher and continue plowing higher. Canadian dollar, um, as you guys saw, we have set a lower low here. We rallied back up as I had predicted to set a lower high and bounce, and they did exactly that. Came back down and set a lower low. Now it's come back up to retest this structure, right? This is the prior low uh, swing. This is the prior swing high, so it's a lower high. And now we've come back up to test it. So if price breaks this lower high, that will be a trend changing break. Now, that's not saying, oh, we're in a strong uptrend now, everything's changed, but that's the initial sign. When you break structure and we set, we break that there, what that would do is that would now give us a higher high, right? So the first step, if you follow my training and you're one of my students, the first step of a trend reversing move is a break of structure. So we have a break of structure. If we break above this 77-ish range, we break and close above this, we've got a change in structure. Then we'll be looking for price to now pull back and set a higher low and then we get confirmation of a new trend when we come back up to set a higher high right so um this is something to be watching here with cad i think it's going to respect this lower high and i think it's going to bounce and move back down but as you guys can see the cad is a pretty um uncontrollable animal kind of does what it wants just like anything in this market does but uh CAD hasn't been in any kind of clear trending moves, so this could have been an outside reversal. We're going to break back here and bust back higher. We'll have to keep an eye on this pair here. Nothing too crazy as far as clear moves, but uh, we are retesting this structure, so we'll see if we can if we can hold this downtrend. Swiss franc, another one here. We were in a strong uptrend with this explosive move. Broke out higher and then reversed, and we came down here and broke structure with this lower low. Then we came up to set this lower high. Again, another lower low. Another lower high. We set a new lower low now, so we could see a lower high being set here, and then potentially another lower low move down and be set. Now, if we do come down and set a new lower low, this 200 day SMA will be my expected range where I think it's going to hit. We have a 20 crossing below the 50 SMA now. The 50 SMA is still sloping upwards, but if we set a new lower high, that'll start to roll over and we'll start to get a clearer downtrend here. Now, again, this could very easily totally change our analysis, come back up and violate this prior high and reverse this trend here. But all we can do is plan and adjust accordingly, follow a plan. And um, over time, once you've developed a successful plan, it'll work out. So that's what we'll be doing here. We'll be anticipating this to come down to a lower low. But if it does not, then we totally adjust our analysis. And now we don't sit there and wait for, oh, no, it's got to come make that low. It's got to come do it. Nope. We adjust our analysis and we move on and we continue trading. Aussie dollar. We are in a similar looking thing. We were in a very strong breakout trend here to the upside. And then we had a very strong sell off off of there to set a lower low. Came down and set a lower high. Then down here to set another lower low. Up here, lower high. Down here, lower low. So as you guys can see, we have been in a very trend following move. Lower low, lower high, very structured. Lower low, lower high, lower low. So as you can see, none of these lower highs broke the prior, right? So none of the structure was bro broken. We set a lower low, lower high, lower low. It didn't come up and break this lower high and then come back down. It's been in a clear trending move, right? Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. We can expect this to be a lower high or this could have been the lower high here and now we're gonna sell off. But as I've been calling, this strong trend line here we could be pulling down to to hit before then possibly moving back into an uptrend right so um, 
We'll have to wait and see what this does this week, but that is something that uh, I think can be a little bit more of a clear trend. If we see a bounce off of here this week, then we can be expecting a lower high to be made to 78 levels, a nice support resistance zone here. Also psychological level, we could see price hit that and then roll back over. But if it opens and starts breaking back below here, then I will be expecting this to just continue lower and this to be the lower high. All right, that's the Aussie. So now taking it over to New Zealand. As you guys see, we are still in this move. Now, if I could draw a trend line on this chart, it would be, let me see actually. You know, I can't draw, but if you, if you guys can imagine a trend line connecting these bottoms here, these tops here, we have a wedge pattern, right? So we have a falling wedge and an uptrend that is a bullish continuation pattern, right? So if it was a falling wedge and a downtrend, that would be a reversal pattern. If it was a rising wedge in an uptrend, that would be a reversal pattern. But this is a falling wedge in an uptrend. That is a bullish continuation pattern. So what we look for there is a break of the upper trend line. So about 73 range being broken would probably invalidate this counter trend line. And that could be a good position to take long, right? So this is, we have been seeing price consolidating. We haven't seen a clear trend. It's just been ranging, ranging. And as you can see, the range has been getting tighter and tighter and tighter. It's making closer pivot swing highs and swing lows. And that is a very strong price action signal that a breakout is blooming, right? Looking at this on the weekly chart, you can see very tight consolidation, very tight consolidation. And typically when we have that, here we go, very tight consolidation, boom, strong breakout, right? Very tight consolidation, boom, strong breakout. Very tight consolidation, boom, strong breakout, right? So. This very tight consolidation typically leads to a strong move. We just want to be prepared and ready to react when that strong move comes. So New Zealand dollar to the upside is what I will be watching. Again, it can very easily break this support to the downside, sell off and reverse off of this here. If these highs weren't falling lower and lower with each one, I would argue that this could be a triple top reversal. But as you can see, we are up here with this one. Now we're slightly lower with this one and we're slightly lower with this one. At the same time, these are slightly higher, slightly higher. This one's not so much, but you can still see this trend line closing in, right? Those, the width of this range from high to low to the width of this range from high to low is significantly smaller, okay? So this is going to show us this wedge pattern and this consolidation that typically leads to a nice, law, a nice strong breakout. All right, so that covers the technical analysis for each individual currency pair. I go over a technical analysis breakdown of all the actual pairs, the majors and the crosses, all the technical charts, all 28 of them. I go through a breakdown with my students, my core FX students. So if that's something you're interested, reach out to me and join the team. However, on the YouTube analysis, I do mainly fundamentals here and I go over the technical breakdowns for the indexes. So last week we had a pretty eventful week. Um, aside from the risk off move, I went over with you guys equity markets selling off. I'll actually switch over to that chart for you real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. S&P 500, the US uh, stock market. As we saw, we had this initial sell off here with all the uh, geopolitical risk and all going on with the US. And then we did see a nice recovery. It retraced back. Let's see what we can get here on the Fibonacci side from this strong move we made up here. From this swing low to this swing high, we came back to the 50%. And we rallied back up again, but we hit a double top here. Price failed to break this area two times and is now sold off sharply. But we came back down to this demand zone. We're back onto the 200 SMA, which held this sell off and stopped it last time. And we're at it here. So this is a very pivotal, pivotal point for the US equity market. As you can see, last Thursday and Friday, we had strong sell offs. But Coming off of that, last time we did see some strong sell-offs from the last tariffs Trump enforced, and we got some rallies off of it. So this could very easily bottom out on this same level, this 200 SMA hold, and break higher. But if this breaks this slow, this could be a very, very pivotal trend-changing move for this U.S. equity market, right? So even just drawing that trend line there. But this 200 SMA, 20 and the 50 are now rolling over. This is a strong level. So these stock markets aren't typically always something we want to be readily on top of. I always follow them. It's all interrelated. I think it's important too, but a lot of traders out there don't see the need to. 
However, there are certain times like this when you must be paying attention to everything because everything gets to a point where they're so interrelated, you must know what's going on. The Japanese yen was blasting last week because of this right here. And if this bounces and we get some strong moves off of it and buyers come back in and confidence comes back in and this market shows that it was just a sell off from this um, uh, tariff and all that's going on, then that can be a big sign and the yen could easily have the floor fall out from under it and all of those gains quickly get swiped out from under it. And that's stuff that we want to be aware of as FX traders. We want to be aware of it. New Zealand, CAD, Aussie, those could, those could all get crushed if this continues and breaks this support and moves lower. But if this bounces and moves higher, they could all have an unbelievable week, a month, whatever it is, whenever it happens, however it happens. All right, so we want to be aware of things like this. The more you know, the more you have, right? Knowledge is power. The more tools you have, the easier it is. Everybody knows how hard it is to succeed in this business. So being ignorant and not wanting to pay attention to other things because you don't think it's related or it's not important to you or whatever the reason may be, it just doesn't make sense, right? There's just no need to be that way. So check out this, this S&P 500 SPX. You can find it on TradingView. Check out the S&P 500. Keep an eye on this and, and it should complement your FX trading. So taking us to the news last week, Sunday we had nothing going on. Um, Monday we had the G20 meetings in Buenos Aires, Argentina. It's the meeting of the top 20 developed industrialized nations. Basically all the financial ministers and financial gurus and the central bankers from all 20 of these nations meet and you know have panel discussions on different things going on in the world um, and how they're going to be handled. Basically a team group, group effort of all the nations in the world to try to steer our world in the proper direction economically and politically and everything else. But um, this is the G20 meeting. This is the economic specifically, um, like the UN and everything else like that. This is going to be for the economic side. Um, I'm not going to go dive into this. You can read some articles online. There's a ton of things being discussed there. But some of the main things that I think are important. Um, one of the main themes was protectionism, you know, this whole uh, nationalism and, and worrying about each individual nation and protecting and keeping their interests in mind. Um, this has been seen in the UK with Brexit. This has been seen in the US with Donald Trump winning the election. This has been seen in Germany. Um, these are things that we're seeing all over the world, and it's something we want to keep an eye on. And also they discussed the threat of the trade war, you know, with, with all the tariffs going on with the US and now China countering. Um, Europe, South America, Canada, China, Mexico, they're all getting involved and, and really a little worried that there's going to be a trade war breaking out, um, which could hurt everybody. So that was a, definitely a big discussion as well as cryptocurrencies. Um, cryptocurrency regulation. Basically, a lot of these nations are on board with broad regulation against cryptocurrencies which as far as the crypto world goes, that's not something they want to hear. And the real reasoning for this crackdown on regulation is going to be security. All the breaches and stolen coins and this, that, and the other that's been going on surrounding it has led to a lot of financial loss and a lot of um, illegal activity. So that is leading to an increased awareness of security and regulation against the cryptocurrency world. After that, on Monday, we had Australia's meeting minutes, basically just to recap the RBA rate statement, and nothing really changed in the rate statement, nothing really changed in the meeting minutes. They're in no rush to move interest rates, as we've known. Nothing's changed in their outlook. They are optimistic on the world. They're optimistic in Australia. However, they have some worries. They have some things that need to pick up before they will start messing with interest rates, and that's going to be household spending, their housing market, and wage growth. So that takes us into Tuesday. Tuesday, uh, we had pounds CPI numbers. This is going to be our consumer price index. As far as inflation goes, basically around the world, central banks have a mandate to keep inflation at 2%. I'm um, not going to go into all the economics behind what inflation is and how the central banks do this or anything like that. Interest rates is the main thing we want to focus on as Forex traders. Central banks control interest rates. Interest rates are set to control a lot of things, but of one of them is going to be inflation. You want to make sure the cost of goods, aka the value of each individual nation's currency, stays stable. Stability of prices. So keeping a 2% per year over year inflation is what the world considers stable. So that's what nations want to keep. The pound has been higher than the, the target, 
It hasn't been high where it's problematic, but it's been higher than the target. So they want it to normalize around the target. This reading was slightly lower than expected. Came in at 2.7 versus 2.8. Um, still above the target 2%, as we know, but it is below what they were expecting. Bank of England still expected to hike rates in May, as we found out later last week when the Bank of England met. Um, the pound did initially move lower off of the CPI, but it didn't last very long. Taking us into Wednesday, big, big, big day of the week. Um, I think there was another second day to the um, G20 meetings, but you guys can read into that if you're interested in learning more about what they discussed. Uh, Wednesday, we had average earnings and job report numbers out of the pound. Uh, wage growth beat expectations, which is the change in pay of employees. Um, that is something that the world, including the UK, have been worried about and has been lacking. However, there was a stronger reading, a pretty strong reading this time. Um, more unemployed employees month over month than expected. Um, there were 9,000 unemployed versus they thought there was going to be a decrease of 3,000. So that wasn't very good. Um, but the unemployment rate did tick lower to 4.3%. The pound did initially spike lower, but then it rallied um, pretty much the rest of the week afterwards. Wednesday, um, later on in the day, this was the big FOMC meeting that we had. So um, this was the new fair head. We don't no longer have Janet Yellen, which I'm sure if anyone pays attention in here, you are aware of. We now have uh, Jerome Powell. He is more of a conservative and he's more of a hawk. He's more, he believes that we should be hiking interest rates faster and they should be higher than they are right now. And um, this meeting made that pretty apparent. They did hike rates again from a half to three quarters of percentage, 0.75% is now the overnight interbank rate in the US. So as you can see, from uh, 1.50, we hiked it up to 1.75. So um, it is, they the Fed is still hiking. People were predicting two to three hikes this year. It's now more looking towards three to four and the chances of four have increased. Um, Powell's, this was his first meeting as a Fed chair, and like I said, he already is showing that he's going to act differently than Yellen. Um, some of the big differences, the Federal Reserve, our central bank here in the U.S., typically is very data-driven, which means they make their decisions with monetary policy based on the number of these economic reports that are coming out. However, there are theories and dot plot charts and um, really just economic theory that the Fed follows with their hiking and cutting of interest rates, which has, depending on the Fed central banker, but of recent, of the past years, has been very theoretical and very um, not so much data dependent as they say they are. Janet Yellen's a perfect example of this. However, Powell is going to be a lot more clear cut with his wording. Janet Yellen was very generalized, very by the book very uh, discreet. Powell was pretty, after this meeting, he's showing he's pretty straight to the point. He doesn't beat around the bush. He doesn't hide things. He's pretty out there about how he feels and how they feel. Um, he sees the Fed more concerned with data than economic theory, as I, as I explained. So um, He's going to be much more open and direct with rate hikes, which in a time of crisis, this could be a very good thing when he's being up front and everyone is transparent with him and he knows what's going on. He knows what we, we know what he's going to do and everyone can react. Um, but basically what this meeting did for us, it showed the chances for four hikes in 2018 is now more likely. The projection for 2020's rate hike rate uh, interest rates has gone up to 3.4% from 2.9%. So um, over the next two years, they have become much more hawkish than we were in the past. And the US dollar was actually weaker after this meeting. Once again, like I've gone over in these videos with you guys, when we see a, pair, a currency that's having strong data, that is acting weak, that is a sign that if even the data can't turn it around, it's gonna continue, continue where it's going. That's a bearish sign when you have strong 
bullish data coming out and you're having bearish price action. So the dollar to the downside is back to fundamentally, in my opinion, only in the sense that when you have a pair that is, when you have um, something like I just said that's reacting conversely from the news, when you have fundamental data that's strong and price action's weak, that tells me that the fundamentals aren't, at their best, aren't pulling the currency higher, it's pushing it lower, so bad data is just gonna push it even harder lower. So, fundamentally, I think the dollar's backed for weakness in that premise, okay? Um, so yeah, basically that's all that came out of that meeting. We did get a rate hike and we did increase the percentage of further rate hikes in the future. We saw Powell, how he's gonna handle these meetings. It was his first press conference. We saw how he um, spoke and handled them and that is basically going to um, be what we're going to be looking at while he serves his term. So we had the um, RBNZ rate statement next. This is New Zealand's central bank meeting. They kept rates unchanged at 1.75% as expected. Not much has changed since the last meeting. Their inflation is lacking. And with lacking inflation, they're not in any kind of a hurry to hike rates. Economic data numbers aren't that positive. They're not worried, but they're not hiking either. So they're basically just waiting for there to be a change, waiting for some kind of development to happen in the economy before they do anything with their interest rates. So again, with New Zealand, um, not much has changed. Following that, we had Aussie unemployment rate. Um, Wednesday, as you guys see last week, was a packed day. And the Aussie jobs report unemployment rate both missed expectations. Um, they, they were weaker on jobs created and the unemployment rate ticked higher from 5.5 to 5.6%. Not much reaction at first from the Aussie, but then it did sell off into the European session and US Open. So we did see weakness out of the Aussie afterwards. It just wasn't an initial crazy jump. Taking us into Thursday, we had the PMI purchasing managers index numbers out of Europe. Every one of them missed. As you guys saw last month, the same thing happened. Euro did sell off over the London session from that, but nothing too crazy as these are just the purchasing managers index, just uh, you know surveys of purchasing managers in the different sectors of the economy in Germany and France, and um, basically just you know it's a leading indicator, back to back months, but it's nothing to really worry about too much yet because the other data in Europe is still remaining strong. Then we had back to back bullish news from the pound. We had retail sales beat expectations. And then we had the rate statement. Um, they kept rates steady at five at half a percentage, 0.5 percent. However, the nine voting members of the Bank of England, the past two month, the past two meetings voted um, nine and nine to nothing to keep rates the same. But this meeting, we saw two of their members specifically agree that they think it's time to rate hike rates again. So this shows much more hawkishness out of the Bank of England when two members automatically come and step over to the other side. Um, so they kept rates steady, but the chances of a hike in May have gone up drastically. And two of these nine voting members voting for a rate hike in this meeting shows that change within their group. Um, since they've already decided on it, all they need is a few more to decide next meeting. Uh, and the whole tone of the meeting really sounded like a hike in May is likely. They basically said they're going to assess if the next hike is necessary in that meeting. And uh, we really saw a pretty strong sterling from it. Not as much as we could have seen. I do think next week we might see some more. As I showed you guys on that technical chart, it's just trickling back up to that high. I think we could see a stronger move this coming week. And then Friday, we took us into um, Canada's CPI report. This is their consumer price index, like I went over earlier in the, with the pound. This is their inflation data, strongest reading, and the data came in a good amount higher than expected at 0.6 versus 0.4%. Canada was mixed off the report. Um, it was the second beat reading in a row, and there was a rise in prices really across the board for inflation, which is very bullish sign for the Bank of Canada, not seeing that much of bullish price action, but um, we did see some strength in the CAD. It was top performer, so we'll have to wait and see how it performs this coming week. And they had retail sales right after, right on it, that missed expectations. Um, pretty big time. They were expecting 1.1% 1 
increase. They only got a 0.3. Um, this could, you know, this slowdown in consumer spending could be what offset the inflation reading as they're getting mixed data. If it was back to back strong data, maybe we see a much stronger CAD. But since it was mixed data, maybe this is telling investors not to get too excited. All right, so that takes us into this week ahead. Starting Sunday, March 25th, we have a pretty slow week here. One of the slower weeks you'll see in FX. No central bank meetings, no unemployment reports, no uh, real crazy numbers. Starting Sunday night, when, so just a quick little um, bit of info. Typically when we have weeks like this where there's not much events going on, when you do see an event like a pound, like a CAD GDP, um, a U.S. final GDP, consumer confidence, business confidence, trade balance even, you'll typically see stronger moves than normal off of these because there are traders still out there looking to trade. However, they don't have many opportunities to. So when these opportunities occur, typically you'll see more strong, more volatility around them than typical. All right, so starting Sunday, normally Sundays, there's not much going on and there's not much trades I'm looking for. But with this news out of New Zealand, potentially could cause a nice 30, 40 pip run, get a little bit of a momentum going in the beginning of the week. So there could be some New Zealand based trades around this trade balance on Sunday. We'll have to wait and see, but um, certainly is possible. Taking us into Monday, not much going on at all. We just have three, the Central Bank, um, Federal Reserve, uh, Open Market Committee speakers participating in a panel discussion at the Chamber of Commerce, Con this Chamber of Commerce in uh, Washington, D.C., the capital of the U.S. So this could cause some movements in the U.S. dollar, nothing too crazy, but something to keep an eye on. Then we have Spanish CPI numbers out of Europe on Tuesday. Uh, this isn't the biggest in the world since it's just Spain, which is only one part of a big Eurozone. But it is the flash reading. It's the first of two CPI data. So it's the initial reading is always going to be the strongest. Inflation has been weak across Europe. So um, this is a big number to focus on. Just we are more focused on the overall European inflation numbers rather than each individual nation. But Spain and Germany's here are two of the bigger economies in Europe. So that could be uh, something to keep an eye on. US dollars, consumer confidence is next. This is basically a household survey to gauge the level of consumer confidence. And it's been high for a while now. Above 100 is going to be a very strong reading. Um, huge portion of the economy is consumer spending. And consumers, how they feel about the economy is going to dictate whether they spend or save money. More spending causes more stimulation, more economic growth. When consumers stop spending and save their money, there's not as much money being spent, not as much growth, and it dampens all of the economy. So... This consumer confidence number is really going to be uh, a decent event for the dollar this week. One of the only events for the dollar, so it's going to be something to keep an eye on. Could be a decent trading event. Then we have Aussie's business confidence report. This has been a somewhat decent event for the Australian dollar. It's a leading indicator of the economic health in Australia. Basically, they survey businesses and ask how they feel about the economy and the business climate. It's been a pessimistic reading for the last five months. Under zero is going to be pessimistic. So we want to keep an eye on what this reading comes out as. They're predicting another negative reading, but we'll have to wait and see. A big miss or a big beat could cause some movement here out of, uh, sorry, this is New Zealand, not Australia. I'm sorry, guys. Out of New Zealand here for their uh, New Zealand Business Confidence Report. Then we have um, US dollars final GDP. This is going to be the third of three GDP readings, so it's really not going to be a big deal. Uh, we already had the... Um, first two readings, the preliminary reading and the advanced reading. This is the final. So this is just basically after they take all the um, data into final consideration, add and make all the adjustments with everything um, that's come together and give us the final GDP reading. This could be different from what they expect, could cause some dollar movement, definitely something to be looking to trade the dollar around, but nothing too crazy. Wednesday is pretty much it going on Thursday. Then we have Germany's preliminary CPI. This is going to be their first of two readings as well. Um, Germany is a big economy in Europe, so it is definitely something we want to watch. CPI is one of the biggest data points being followed. However, again, like I said, this is just one data point out of one country within the Euro continent. So um, it's not going to be too big of an event. But since the euro doesn't really have anything else going on this week, that could cause some movement. Pound's got their current account. This is going to be the same as the trade balance we have out of uh, New Zealand. It's going to be imports minus exports. Basically just shows us a little bit of a supply and demand for the currency as far as from a 
forex trader standpoint what that event tells us then we have the final gdp um out of the pound again this is going to be the final reading for gdp so not going to be too big of a market mover but it could be all from expectations so something we do want to keep an eye on then we have the monthly gdp reading out of canada each country kind of does things slightly differently with their economic data canada reports a rolling month over month gdp and this is a pretty big market mover whenever canada does it so this is believe it or not going to be the event of the week here on thursday morning out of canada um so this will be something to watch keep an eye on how their gdp number comes out and this will be the fundamental trade of the week with the cad because there's really not much else going out the last two readings have met expectations out of canada and they haven't big too big of reports but we want to see a miss or a beat to get volatility and that's what we'll be looking to catch and then friday we have nothing going on we have after hours after closing of trading manufacturing purchasing managers index out of china that won't have any effect until sunday could cause some slight gaps but uh not really anything to watch any of these friday night news events are typically kind of ignored all right guys so that pretty much does it here um i appreciate you guys tuning in went a little long this time 40 minutes but hopefully you guys find that as a good thing that's 40 minutes of knowledge for free that you get here every week uh, i really appreciate you guys checking these videos out please check out my site Follow and subscribe T3 Live. They have some great content. I really appreciate them letting me and asking me to do these videos for them. Um, I know I provide a lot of good value for them, but I also like being able to work together with such a big name. So I thank you guys for watching these videos. Please reach out to me if you have any recommendations, anything you want me to include in next week's video. Uh, but I hope you all have an excellent trading week. Reach out to me with anything you need. Follow me on Instagram, core.fx. Check out my website, corefxtrading.com. Check out T3 Live. Thank you all for the support. God bless you all, and I'll see you all next week.